Hello everyone, welcome back to PJ Chain Design. Today we're gonna talk about this wheat style bangle and how do you make them in different thickness. Are you ready? Let's get started. So we are going to starting from the scratch by drawing a ellipse, set it up center for zero and the end axis I'm going to type it 30 and moving up for however uh, how thick you want it over there. For the bangle you also need to cut out the opening so I'm gonna draw a line over here and also mirror to the other side. Using those two lines let's go ahead to trim the opening there. So now this is the curve that we are going to use to create a bangle. We need to know how long it is. So that's using the command length. And it shows it's 131.847. Just make a copy and we want to draw a straight line there with exactly the same length. So now we have there. Uh, we can simply just give us a guideline by using the command divide. And let's say you, if you wanted to have like 20 uh, or 24 uh, pattern, you can divide it for whatever you want. I'm just gonna using 20 over here. So I know if the pattern that I create over here, then that will be 20 at the end for my whole pattern. So let's go ahead to creating the pattern. Simply, I'm going to use the arc and snapping from this point to this point coming down something like this. I might need to angle it a little bit to work within this area. If you feel like this is not puffy enough, go ahead to adjust your arc into whatever thickness and whatever that work for you. So I'm going to move this down a little bit. All right, we need to have it overlapping a little bit there. And then I simply just go into mirror that arc that we just make to the other side. All right, to make it nice, I always don't want to have a sharp corner. So let's go ahead to giving a fillet. So maybe 0.3 millimeter in between here and here. Okay, so now we need to make it a little bit puffier. So let's go ahead to creating another arc. I want to snapping into the midpoint here and midpoint over there, holding my shift at the front view so I have a half round over here. If this is a way too puffy for you, you can always tone it down by moving down the control point on the top. Now we need to sweep this guy, so we need to have a rail. Currently they are four little section. So let me go ahead to join all of them first. And we want to split with the point, snapping into the midpoint here, all the crossing. And now we have a two rail. So we are going to use the sweep to rail. Rail one, rail two, you're gonna go from this point go to the cross section and coming over to this point over here and then you will get this surface. If you like the surface, you can go ahead to creating the pattern but I also like to have is to tilt it a little bit so they kind of talking into each other. After that, I'm simply just going to mirror to the other side for whatever thickness that you're going to have. You can also keep the bottom a little bit more flat if you want to. It doesn't have to be exactly the same, but it's completely up to you for whatever you like to do. I simply, it's going to use the loft command and going to loft from this edges to this edges. And again, from this edges to this edges. So let's go ahead to join all of them then this will be one component. We want to give it a try by mirror to the other side. Then you will have them look like this. Let's give it a look on the render view and see if you like the way they connected. We also wanted to bring up both of them and try another test by making a copy to see if this is the way you like. If that worked for you, let's go ahead to 
bowling union, those two, and always make sure it is a closed solid poly surface. Then we want to come over here and use the linear array and we want to array. If we have a 20 of them, we go from here to here, like what I was planning. Look, they are not touching. So that was a measuring mistake. So we will need double of them. So in that case, we're going to have 40 section of them. So let's do one more time. We want to do more than 40. Let's try 45. And I simply just want to eyeball it to bring it back something like this. Whoa. If you ever happen something like that, it's because um, when I try to uh, bring them up, I wasn't aligned correctly. All you need to do is coming over here, align from the bottom for all of them, and you can align somewhere just a little bit above the curve that you have. Now let's take a look on this one. If everything looked right to you, we can delete the extra that we don't need it. And we kind of need to fix the end over here. Let's go ahead to Boolean Union them first. And I want to bring this curve and this curve down. Let's do align centers. And we don't need the rest of them, just hide them. Okay, so I want the ending look a little bit better. So I'm just going to draw a square from this point to this point and moving this square up. Simply just go ahead to trim the end over here and the extra over there. So now we have it is the opening over here. We simply want to cap them so they will become solid and we can use the fillet edges for something really small. So it will be nice and rounded on the edges. It's not cutting you a risk over there. We're going to use the same radius on this side. So let's try the fillet edges and for 2.25 uh, and we're going to select all of them here. And hit enter. And this is not working over here. I have a video talking about why fitted is not working, but to fix this issue over here, we can do the fitted again and we're going to pick up all of them here. So where has the problem? We're going to bring them into zero. So click on this point, type it zero. Click on this point, type it zero and very last one as well and you can hit enter. All right, so that worked much better and double check it is a closed polished surface. Okay, so with this one, you can flow it back if you like it in this way, but I personally like the, the middle is a bit thicker on the side is a bit thinner, right? So we are going to use the cage edit and we're gonna pick up the bounding box aligned to the wall. XYZ is full point, that's fine. And then, so this is the point that we get over here. So let me pick up this and also pick up all of this. And I want to use the scale 1D snapping somewhere at the end of this curve. And we're going to do something like this. So it's tapered down on the two end. Okay. It's looking pretty good there. I'm also coming into the front view and let's do scale 1D one more time. This time snapping to the bottom and gonna bring it down like this. All right. So you can keep editing if you want to. I'm going to stop tweaking right here. So next to moving this back to here, we're going to use flow along curve and we're going to pick up the object. The base curve will be the curve here on the bottom the target curve will be this curve. All right, so then we will ha have our bangle here. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to learn Rhino CAD jewelry, I have a new course to show you step by step from very beginner to intermediate level. I will have the link at the description below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next.